We are cooking again. I'm going to develop a roll of Foam Pan 100 Black and White Super 8, which I shot inside this reloadable cartridge. And I'm going to do a reversal developing on it using caffeinol, coffee, washing soda, and vitamin C, caffeinol CM. I'm going to do the bleaching for the reversal with sodium bisulfate and potassium permanganate. I'm going to do a clearing bath of sodium metabisulfate and a fixing of Ilford's fixer. What's new about that? Reversal developing of black and white, something I've already covered in previous films, but what's different is that I shall be using this. Yes, I finally did it. I finally went and got one. It is, of course, a proper Lomo developing tank. Right. So let's get going. I'm not going to film all the bothersome weighing out of powders and making fluids because I've done that in all my previous videos. Let's go straight to using this. When you've opened up the tank inside the changing bag, you'll find this, or rather you'll feel this because you won't be able to see it. But everything I'm going to show you now is taking place in complete darkness in the changing bag. So everything you see me do, you're going to have to do by touch. So this thing is made of uh, three parts. This is the spindle, which screws the two plates together. And these are the two plates. Now, this particular model takes 8mm or 16mm. If you are developing 16mm film, see there's this collar here. Turn it the other way up and that collar is a, becomes a spacer and that gives you a 16 millimeter wide spiral. Uh, if you turn it over, eight millimeter, simple. So inside the bag, make sure the collar's the right way up if you're doing Super 8. Take this bit off, take this bit off, you're left with this. Now it starts to get tricky. This is what you have to load your film into in order for it to be uh, properly spaced and uh, sitting in these grooves. This is in fact uh, a spiral. Firstly, you'll have to take your film out of the cartridge that you shot it in and put it into a reel. This is very important. This is an unmissable step. Uh, once it's in a reel like this, it's gonna be a lot easier to load it onto the spiral. Now, if you shot using one of these, congratulations, you are up to some uh, next level shit. Just pop the thing open, it's a reloadable cartridge and take out the spool and wind it into, into this, inside the bag, of course. If you shot on a disposable cartridge Super 8, you will have to tease the film out and wind it onto the reel as you do so. So you've got your un undeveloped exposed film here in your, uh, in your reel. And here's what you want to do. The way this thing is designed is that there's a curved wall here and a system of little uh, uh, slots and catches here. And if you know how, you can uh, anchor the end of your film in the middle, in the center here. This is very important. You make a kink. You feel for that, for that curved wall there. Keep that on the right-hand side. And where it, it ends on the left-hand side, there's a way in for the film. You pass it around this bit here. And the kink slots into this side here. So that's how it goes. Let me pull this up a bit. So it's come in around this side, gone around this kind of V shape into this little chamber here. And that's where your kink is up there and it bends around to here. And this way it'll withstand a good few tugs on the end uh, <laughs> before that happens. And that does happen. You're just going to have to suck it. Once you've got this night nightmare assembly done, you kink this bit back here and start feeling for the edge, for this curved wall. This is where I realized what the curved wall some is for. Some thought has been put into this, but get the, get the um, film laid against this curved wall on the outside and turn it around slowly as you do. Now, when it comes off the curved wall, it's in pole position to enter the spiral, okay? If you ever lose track, just feel for the curved wall and let it come off the curved wall straight into the groove. 
and it'll stay in the groove. Now at this point you're going to want to put the top the platter on. Um, you might even want to put it on earlier because once it's in the groove it can pop out of the groove very very quickly. So when it comes to the edge of the curved wall, try and hold that in place. <laughs> Get the top platter. Remember which, which, whether you're doing a Super 8 or 16 mil. And this might be the most important thing of all. This trailing bit of film, this is what's about to go onto the spiral, needs to be at an angle. The smooth side of the film needs to be towards you and the holes need to be leaning back away from you. And it's at about a 45 degree angle I'm holding it, although you can do it even flatter. And when it's like this, it will go around the spiral. This is where things often go really wrong. You, you get the top platter, you feel for, of course I can see what I'm doing, so it's easier, but if you feel around without that popping out of the center, that, that happens. Oh, I'm so mad when it happens. So you put that on top, find, find your spindle. If you line it up right, the spindle should just go straight through and screw right in there. Now, Here's the magic moment where you'll know if, if, if things are going well or not. The point of this thing is to spin. While it spins, as long as this angle is, is, is flat, like away from you, like this. But check this out. Oh, 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 see, fucked up. That happens, if it pops out like that. Of course, you don't know you fucked up until you've gone around a few more times and then you're really in trouble. There it goes. And any time you want to know how you're doing, on this particular model, you just can just feel through here, and you feel that, that, that line of film, you feel the edges of it, and that tells you, yes, it's all coming onto the spiral very nicely. So we keep going. And on it goes. Oh, see, that's, okay. Well, you get the idea. So finally, when you've got your spiral loaded up, you stick it into the tank and then put the top on, falls on, and then you just turn it and it locks. And then it's ready to come out of the bag. So this is how I've been advised to set one of these uh, developing tanks up, which is uh, on a level higher than your sink. Down there is the bathroom sink and here is the Lomo tank. And this is so it's easy to let fluids drain out through this hose down into the sink. Right now the hose is clipped up there just to keep it out of the way so that the stuff doesn't drain out as soon as I fill it in. And this hose is for putting stuff into the tank. So without further ado, let's put our caffeinol into the tank and we're gonna give it 20 minutes. And when you want to do an agitation, you just turn this. Just see if we can shake off any bubbles. Right, so it's been 20 minutes in there. I'll give it one last agitation. And all I do is unclip the out hose and put it down into the bucket and simple as that all the uh, caffeinol drains straight into the bucket for reuse and uh, <laughs> it did a fart <laughs> sounded like Donald Duck sounded like <laughs> and now I just flush it out with cold water Uh, there it goes down the drain. The best thing is, when water goes through it, it automatically turns the, the disc inside. Okay, look at the central spindle when water is poured in. See that? It's going round. Uh, okay, we've had a very small um, flood here in the bathroom. I poured water into there. I should have just kept pouring it into through the funnel, to the top hose. But I poured it into the centre because I got impatient. And then the whole thing just erupted 
water came out the sides and everything. Oh my god. Oh, it's so wet here. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's been through the bleach, it's been through the clearing bath, and now it's ready for something called second exposure. Oops, nice fish. Oops. Because it's where we expose the film. I'm using a torch on my mobile just to make sure it really gets up. Oh shit. Oh for fuck's sake. That's the film after the clearing bath. And before the second developer, it's got to go through another developer and a fixer before we can uh, finish it off. So here's the caffeinol coming for the second uh, time. Every stage of processing after the second exposure to light can be done with a lid off. So the second development, the fixing and the washing are all pretty straightforward, especially as you don't have to use the hoses anymore. So one, with one final wash and hanging up on this device, drying out and projected, let's see what we've got. Roll projector. Right, well we start off with some shots that I did using a uh, test device which mounted the Super 8 camera on my bike. And apart from all the usual bits and pieces you can see on the image from the caffeinol, those kind of sparkly white bits, the main feature is this big moving black bar on the right hand side. And I worked out that that is the smooth side of the film and it was the bit that was embedded in the spiral. And what I think I did, or rather didn't do, was to adequately do the second exposure. Uh, I know it's not a problem with the camera because the second half of the film, which I did the second exposure really well on, doesn't have that black mark. So that's a cautionary tale there. Oh, <laughs> side note, it's better not to attach the camera to the handlebars of the bike because it's much more stable if you just uh, attach it to the frame of the bike. Okay, so this is that was with the UMIG and this is with a... Canon 814 Auto Zoom, which is a uh, new acquisition of mine. Now you see those, that black thing on the side is now gone because I this is the second half of the roll and I exposed this really, I re-exposed this really properly. Not bad picture. Um, you do have you do have those white sparkly bits. Uh, I think that's a feature of Caffeinol. I didn't. Uh, this was all in pretty low light. The aperture was all the way open on the Canon 814. And this was at 12 frames a second, so I'd try that. The rest is all at 18 frames a second. Uh, daylight the next day. With lots of light, it, it all comes out looking a bit better. The film definitely sustained less damage in the Lomo spiral than it did when I stuffed it all in a ball into the 35mm tanks. There are better spirals, which will take a whole roll of Super 8, might get one of those eventually. The film actually came out of development looking a lot better than what you just saw, but that was the last in the long line of failed telecines, which probably added a few nicks and scratches to the film. When I finally move on to colour, which has got like about 14 steps, I will definitely try it in the Lomo spiral. Okay, well, check back later. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'll probably do one about sound. You heard me right. <laughs>